You can download it here at heliconsoft.com, link in the description below. It is totally free for 30 days and no credit card needed at the time I am doing this video. I am not sponsored by Helicon or anyone. Alright, this is what you see once you open Helicon Focus. Here in the middle you have the current version and you can see that I have the Pro package still good for a few weeks. So on the top left, if you click on Helicon Focus menu, you have things related to the program. If you click on the About Helicon Focus, this is where you can check for updates. But you can have them checked automatically if you click on Preferences. You have also there other options like Hide Helicons, Hide other programs or Quit Helicons. Next to it you can manage your files in the file menu. The most important will be Open Images. Not that there is many ways to import your photos in Helicon. You can click on Open Images here. You can also click on this icon or directly drag some images in Helicon from one of your files. Or click that small icon here. So, in the file menu, it is all about managing your files. You can import, save, export, and more. Something interesting, here you can set a dust map of your sensor. Feel free to stop the video and read what Helicon says about it. Personally, I never used it. I feel like it's more for micro photography as opposed to macro photography. Please comment below if you are using the dust map and what do you think of it. Still in the file menu, something very interesting is the batch process menu. Imagine you have 200 photos good for 20 stacks. You can actually tell Helicon Focus how you want it to separate your stacks and then it will process them all while you are doing something else like subscribing to my channel or liking this video for example. We will try it, but first I want to finish the overview and do a simple stack so we can go step by step. Alright, next to the file menu you have the edit menu. Inside the edit menu you have render and render preview. Render is the magic button that makes Helicon Focus stack your images together. You will also find a render button here and here. We are still in the edit menu and this is where you can choose between stacking and panorama. Let's talk about panorama quickly. This banana was too close to me so I had to take two photos. So let's drag those two photos onto Helicon. There we go. You left click on the photo on the right and you try to rebuild your banana. Here you have a few sliders and some parameters that you can change to help with your banana. And when you are satisfied, you click render, then you save. Ok, let's click back on the focus mode. Next we have the view menu. If you click on view, you can choose if you want to split your screen vertically or horizontally to compare one source image against the final result of your stack. You can also zoom in, zoom out and you have other view related stuff. You can choose a language if you want to see the toolbar or not, if you want to see the status bar or if you want to enter the full screen. Finally, if you click on the help menu, you get some help. I will strongly advise you to watch even more video tutorials in here. Next we have a few icons. We saw already this is one way among three other to add images into Helicon right here. How you want to compare images vertically or horizontally. 
That little camera icon is the Helicon Remote Control, working only if you purchase the Helicon Remote Control plan that will allow your phone or your computer to be connected to your camera. I have only the Helicon Pro version, so I never use that. And you have one of the render button here as well. And here a little Facebook icon to share directly on Facebook. Now let's go on the most interesting stuff. Here you have four windows or pages if you will. The rendering mode, the retouching mode, the text scale mode and the saving mode. The rendering mode is the page you are in by default and this is where it happens. This is where you will see the source images that you have imported in Helicon in order to process your stack. And this is where you choose the method of rendering. The retouching mode. Uh, actually, we cannot get there since we didn't stack anything yet. So let's just run real quick the focus demo that we can find in the file menu. And there you go. So this is where you fix or adjust or correct manually any problem, artifacts, miscalculation, distraction elements, missing part of an insect or whatever you don't like with all the tools you have on the right of your screen. We will see more details later. Then the next page is the text scale page where you can write and incorporate any kind of text in any color, police or any transparency. I am just sad that I cannot choose the size of it. You can also add a scale of your choice in your image. Let's add this one for example. And the last mode is the saving mode that I never explored much. I just push the first button simply to save my final stacked image. The next button is actually cool. It will create a 3D model of your stack and you can play a bit with the settings. So up here we see that you are in view mode of your 3D model. If you go to file you can save it. All right, let's finish the overview. Down here, in any mode or page, you have your rendered results. And here at the bottom of the screen, you can zoom in and zoom out with a slider or with the plus and the minus. Now let's try one simple stack from, from start to finish and you will see how simple it is. You can click on that little setting icon just under your source images there you click remove all images. Now we want to import some focus bracketed images so there is many way to do it as we saw earlier. I will open the folder that contain my stacks. I will select and drag all the images into Helicon. So now on the left your first source image from that list of 20 images is displayed. You can click on the second one for example and the second one will be displayed now on the left. Note that you can always unselect any of those pictures if you don't want them in your stack by unchecking them. Under your source images you have the tree stacking method that you can choose. Feel free to pause the video and read exactly what they are about and what they do. I am myself mostly using the method C for my handheld focus stack. But I will advise you to try each method, compare the result and simply work with the best one. Under the three methods you have the radius from 1 to 60 and the smoothing from 1 to 10 and both of them will change the contrast or smoothness to help Helicon in the process of focus stacking. And here I usually don't touch those two sliders at all. Note that with the method C 
you lose the radius slider. So let's try now the three methods. I select method A, I render, and we wait. Now on the left, you still have the first source image, and on the right, you have the final result. You can use the roller of your mouse to zoom inside the picture. If you left click with your mouse, you have a little magnifier. If you right click and hold the button on your mouse, you can move the picture. To move the picture, you can also click on that little icon on the bottom right. Now let's try the method B. Let's click render and wait. Now here on the right you have the new method B result, which seems as good as the method A. You can click on each of the two results at the bottom left and appreciate the differences that you get with each result. Now let's try the method C. And there you have it, the results of the three methods. Then you choose the best one. I will go with the method C. Now let's go in the retouching mode and see what it is all about. In retouching mode, you still have at the top right your source images. You can still click on each of them. The one that you select will still appear on the left of your screen. And on the right, you still have your final image made from your 20 stacked images. Now on the top of your source images, there is three brush effects that you can use. The first one is the one that you will use the most. It will copy a part from a selected source image on the left to the resulting image on the right. So let's say that you want that white part of your Hellnut blurred, just for the example. Usually, obviously, you want the exact opposite. You want everything in focus. Well, it is simple. You just left click on your mouse and what you see in that little circle on the left is what will be cloned in the circle on the right. So let's say I want that white spot to be very blurry. I will choose an image with a very blurry white spot among my source images this one and then I just paint over that white spot on the right. Now let's say that you were wrong and you don't like the result. Then click on that icon which is an eraser and now you can erase everything. The second icon will clone any part of your final image from another part of that same final image. I use it sometimes to clone some texture in my image. For example, if a part of an antennae or a part of a leg of an insect is missing, then I can create that part with that cloning tool. Okay, let's say you don't want that whiter part of your nuts, you want it all brown. For this example, we will make the brush size a bit bigger and the brush hardness a lot softer to get a good gradient. And we will let the color tolerance as it is. Then you choose what part you want to clone. Let's try here. Now let's try to clone it right here. So I just click several times until I'm happy. And there you go. Not bad, what do you think? Now let's go back to our first copy tool, the brush tool. We saw already that you can change the brush size and the brush hardness. The color tolerance is quite a new addition, I think. And I will have to experiment, and you should as well. The brightness slider, depending on the source image, can be very useful because sometimes there is some difference of brightness between the source image that you choose and your final image.
just under those slider you have other useful things the undo brush the undo stroke and the undo point and if you undo too much you can redo your point your stroke or your brush then we will go again to the next page which is text scale and there is not much uh, more to learn here just click on text uh, add your text change the color change the police and more then you go to saving and you save By default, Helicon will choose as a saving name the date, the number of stack, the method, among a few more numbers that I did not yet identify. Then you choose where and what format. Again, I would advise DNG if you have more editing to do afterward. Now I show you a last thing. You go in File Hub there. You click Batch Process. This can be useful if you have a lot of stacks to do and you don't want to select them all and render them all one by one manually. Here you can add your folder or multiple folders or your images. In my case I will add one folder. So I click on the folder. I click open. And your folder is now added as folder number 1. Here is the path of your folder. Here is the number of images inside your folder. Here is the focus stacking method that you want to use. We will use method B. Here you can choose the radius and the smoothing. I never use that as I said. And the last little box here is very important. So let's click on it. This is where you can choose how you want Helicon to split your stacks. So you click split stack, try to say it, and you have four choices. You can split your images by image count, by shooting time, by exposure, or by focus. In my opinion, the most interesting one for us as macro photographer will be the second one split by shooting time knowing that I shoot in burst mode it is safe for me to write six seconds in the box so now the application will separate all the stacks as long as I stop shooting in between for more than six seconds note that here depending on your splitting method and parameter that you choose you will see the number of stack that will be processed. You click split and now you have your five stack ready right there. Down here you have your saving parameters. You can save your stack uh, in uh, JPEG, TIFF or DNG files. You probably want to go for DNG again with a quality of 100% then you want to choose your saving location and you click render the batch processing will disappear and now you see helicon processing my five stacks one by one now the small problem is that i could not batch process my canon raw and zero file i have to convert manually my raw files to dng before splitting the stacks which was very quick to do. Remember that DNG is the closest that you can get to RAW. It retains a lot of information. Note that Helicon will ask you to download the free Adobe DNG converter at some point if you are importing RAW images. Link in the description below. And also note that the batch process will work as well with uh, JPEG and TIFF files. So there you have it. You can see that Helicon did a good job with my five stacks. I hope I did a good job as well with my overview. Please give me a like. I will answer any questions. I see you on the next one. Cheers.